Oh, it's so important. Yeah, uh, it's the most important. Uh, it's the most important skill. It's a skill. It's a, yeah. it's every bit a skill, and it's so important if you want to be a professional today. Mm. You want to be successful today. You have to go network. You have to be a genuine person. <laughs> Yo, what is up? We're back at 120 Collective, another episode of Novelty Voice. I am your host, Adam Karendang. Um, I'm here with a special guest, Wes Crouch. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well, man. Yeah, well, thanks for having me out. Right on. Hey, uh, real quick, I just want to share what Novelty Voice is. And, and really, it's a platform for creative entrepreneurs and young f- professionals to be heard. You know, our goal is to just interview dope up-and-coming movers and doers here in the city and get to know more of, uh, you know, who they are on a personal level, uncover their journey, their mindset, and just their vision overall for what they're doing. Um, so, you know, without further ado, Wes, he's the CEO and co-founder of an application called Tutor. And so we'll dive into this a little bit later. It's a super interesting app, um, very, very useful in today's market. Uh, but first, let's dive into your story growing up. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm from a uh, small, oh, first off, uh, that's a great mission statement you guys got. That's really right cool. That's dope. I like that. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, but, uh, you know, I come up from a small town, right? So uh, I think we had 400 people in the town. Uh, what is that in Indiana? Yeah, it's called Matthews. Okay, um, where is that at? Yeah, so it's up, <laughs> uh, up near Ball State, uh, okay. a little small town outside of there. But, uh, yep, I grew up there. I went to a, a small high school called Eastbrook. It was surrounded by four cornfields. Um, <laughs> and I went to then Ball State. Um, okay. To go to college as a biology and chemistry degree, and yet I'm a <laughs> entrepreneur. <laughs> right? Hey, whatever it, yeah. it happens, man. Um, and then, so how many people did you graduate with? Small town in high school? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, so we had 130 in our graduating class. Oh wow! Yeah, That's yeah. Crazy. I mean, it was tiny. How many people were in your school? You said uh, in the school in the high school. So our junior high and high school were combined. Uh, <laughs> okay. So yeah. So there was about 130 in each class. So okay. Uh, yeah. Nice. And so, what was your childhood like? You know, siblings. Um, how were you raised? Yeah, Give us yeah. a little background. Yeah, yeah. So um, my childhood was was interesting for sure. It was, I mean, we grew up with uh, strong morals, strong foundations, right? I had both parents, uh, a lot of love, and they never let us go without, but it was never mm-hmm. never easy, right, financially? Yeah. Um, you know, my dad has a freshman high school education, and he had a kid at 15. Uh, okay. And then he had, I mean, he basically uh, had to come up, and he has his own tech, I mean, his own HVAC company today, and they do very well for themselves, but it wasn't always like that. Um, and growing up, they just taught us to work your ass off, respect people, respect yourself, and uh, if you're going to go for something, go for it. Like, really do it, and that's, that's that. kind of what uh, they taught us. Right on. Yeah. And uh, how many siblings do you have? Yeah, there's four of us. There's four of us Crouches. One of them is my co-founder, actually. Okay, uh, My cool. oldest brother is one of my co-founders. Um, and then are you the youngest, middle? I'm the youngest brother. Uh, I'm the youngest of the boys, and then I got a little sister as well. She's dope. And then I got another brother as well. Nice, yeah. right on. And then, so when you were growing up, coming from a super small town in Indiana, what did Wes want to be when he grew up? Yeah, it's actually super shitty. Uh, <laughs> like, I mean, for years, I mean, my whole life, I wanted to be a doctor, right? Okay. I wanted to go and uh, and maybe do a surgery. I mean, it was it was I was, I was being dumb, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I've always, I'd always said I wanted to be a doctor, but really, I never knew what I wanted to do. Um, and so that was always the goal. I went to college for that, and um, I found out that I didn't want to do that. Um, but no, I was always going to be a doctor, never going to be an entrepreneur. I, really? I never, I never would have thought that, right? I mean, it's, it's so unheard of where I come from. I yeah. don't know any entrepreneurs. Um, so was, did you even grow up in that environment when it was, uh, where it's kind of like, you know, go to school, get good grades, go to college, that, that typical? Or did your was, parents kind of challenge you to just go out there and really do whatever you wanted? No, no. So my parents were, you know, so my parents saw, and I, I, I appreciate this. Uh, they, they saw that education is one of the most important things that someone can have today. For uh, sure. They weren't given the, the chances like we've been given to go, to go to college and to really have an education and go and use that education to make a life. Um, and they, they were very strict on that. Every one of their children have uh, bachelor's degrees. Every one of them have gone on to, to school beyond that. Um, mm-hmm. And they, they were very strict that you guys are going to uh, go get your education and you guys are going to go do something with it. Mm. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah that's kind of how I was too. Um, and so, you know, being wanting to be a doctor, what what were what what were your hobbies? You know, when you were growing up. Yeah, you know, it's 
it's i mean it's it was so stupid because i didn't have any hobbies that was like being a doctor or nothing <laughs> i could attribute to do that uh i was actually a heavy kid when i was uh when i was young you're pretty um, fit now <laughs> i appreciate it yeah so uh, up until my senior year i had I lost like 60 pounds my senior year. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I worked my ass off. Uh, okay. So all on purpose. On purpose. Yeah. Lifting 100%. weights, diet, yeah, exactly. everything. Exactly. I got my ass up uh, from the house. Oh, wow. uh, I just, I worked really hard. I saw yeah. something. I wanted to change it. And uh, that was honestly, I think that's a indirectly, um, it made me into who I am today. Um, that's one of those obstacles that, you know, it, the weights never come back. Yeah. Um, and it's not because I, I just, religiously uh, under eat or over work out it's just and I changed the way I was yeah it's um, your lifestyle changed yeah, that's yeah. awesome and so this was you said like senior year yeah yep I and lost like 62 pounds I think it was dude that's awesome yeah. and what was that was that all from um you just looking at yourself and being like you know what I'm really not happy I'm gonna make some lifestyle changes or was that from other people or yeah, what there was, there was a girl uh, uh, that's, that's, that's like the there story. we go yeah. so uh, I was actually at an ice cream shop um, <laughs> wait, I thought I was on a date I wasn't on a date this is a very sad story but uh, <laughs> uh, I guess I wasn't on a date but uh, there were some there were some girls that were in a table next to us or whatever but they were uh, my date, Olivia, had, must have overheard them talking, and they were talking about a guy that had lost weight. And she goes, oh, why don't you lose weight? And maybe girls would like you, too. Oh, Yeah, wow. and I was like, oh, okay. You're okay, like, wait we'll a see. second. We'll <laughs> yep, yep. And then I dated the prom queen the senior year. There yeah. you go. That's yes, what's sir. up. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's awesome. So how long did it take you to uh, lose 60 pounds? Ah. Uh, 10 months, I think. Uh, I think 10 to 12 months, but then I got thin, right? Like, yeah. uh, you, I definitely had to learn how to do all that kind of stuff. I yep. mean, you, I didn't know how to do it. Uh, I just kind of went with it and learned and, and asked people, and um, I figured it out. For um, sure. Yeah, but it, it took a while. It really did. Props to you, definitely. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, and then so you graduate, you, you lose 60 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> you graduate high school. And then did you, where'd you go to college? Ball State, yeah. Okay, you went to Ball State, and then um, was that like, because you're kind of near the Ball State area, was that the only college you were looking into, or were there any other options? No, so actually it was anti-Ball State, didn't want to go, wasn't <laughs> okay. going to do it. I mean, I was, I mean, determined not to go there. Just because, I mean, it was so close to home, and yeah. uh, I thought I wanted to go away from, my dad, he definitely didn't want me to go away, so uh, <laughs> neither my mom either, but my dad was, really pushing Ball State. So uh, I went and checked it out, and I was like, fuck, I actually liked it. So, <laughs> so actually, I went there, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then so going in, you had that biology degree that you chose, yep. or did you change your major? Stayed uh, the whole way. Um, yeah, I didn't. I mean, I was determined I was going to go. I, yeah, it yeah. Wasn't, uh, wasn't a matter of it was too hard or it was – it just – I was going to do it, and I thought, oh, well, I'll fall in love with it later. Mm. Um, and then along the way, you realize you like other things. Yeah, and yeah. so along the way, was it? So did you always enjoy school? Is college something that you found you just you didn't like? Did you like it? What was your yeah, experience? Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a tough question. I'll say yes and no to that. Mm -hmm. um, I love college. I think college is the most important four years in someone's life. I think I stated that earlier. Um, I hated school. Everybody hates yeah. school, right? But I loved college. And it's, mm -hmm. not just, it's not just the partying or going out like that. I didn't actually really do that um, very often until my junior year, at least. And I don't want to love them nuts. But uh, uh, it, was, it was before that. You get to figure out who you are, right? You get to, uh, it is the, the, the best four years that you never get back. Mm. Uh, it's the only four years where it's like a scrimmage in life. Mm. Uh, you get to go and just practice and you get to fall down as cliche that is and then uh you get back up and nothing happened you're, you're unscathed so uh i really took advantage of that and i i mean i got as involved as i could um i did presidents of multiple organizations i was a homecoming king one year nice. uh i ran a few political campaigns one of them i was on the slate and uh that was uh that's what taught me how to be an entrepreneur is that's that slate um what, go into that so yeah so it's uh i mean Every student gets as many opportunities as they want, right? Yeah. That degree is, is worth shit today. It just is. Unless you're going to a top school, it's worth shit, okay? But it's <laughs> what you do with those four years that make it worth something. Uh, and that, it was student government, right? So at Ball State, they actually take pride in that. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, so all these teams get together, and you pick four people uh, that you, across different parts of campus that you like and want to run with, and you, and you pick initiatives. So we created initiatives that students wanted. We talked to students. We really figured out our product, right? Our product was our initiatives uh, that we wanted, and we really fought for things. Um, and then we basically uh, worked our asses off. We had like 
25, 30 people under us uh, nice. for our campaign staff. We had raised a couple thousand bucks, which was really good for, for being in, in college. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we just pushed, I mean, as hard as we could. And I learned how to debate. Uh, I learned how to, I mean, I was a stiff, just <laughs> stiff dude, right? And then uh, my campaign manager, DJ Pulse, uh, you'll probably never hear this, but I'm telling you what, him and, I mean, him and uh, his, his crew, they, they really, I mean, they really forced us to come out of our comfort zone, and they did. I mean, they would put us in front of uh, the most the beautiful girls, and, like, mm -hmm. they'd say, all right, talk to them. I mean, and we had to. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. taught us, like, how to overcome those obstacles and those fears of, of, of public speaking. And, and I'm telling you, today, it's, uh, I still think back on those days. And I still actually call them. Uh, I was in a uh, pitch competition about a year ago, mm -hmm. and I called them, and I had them prep me. Um, and, and I still do today, just because they, they know what they're doing, and... and no, they're genuine. Yeah, but that, yeah, that, you yeah. get to meet people like that when you're in college. Definitely. And I think, dude, that's the <clears> – <throat> the, um, the, those types of positions when you're just thrown into doing something and it's almost – you're in that situation where it's like, well, shit, I kind of have to go talk in front of these people or these – people that are telling me to, to, I can't let them down or they're just going to, you know, right. call me whatever names yep. or just make me feel bad yes. and I'm going to be like, shit, I should have just did it. Yep. But then once you go and do it, then it's like, what was I even worried about? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it's like you, once you get done, you just feel so accomplished. I exactly. mean, it's, a, it's almost a high. It really mm -hmm. is. When, when you get to go and, and do those things and you're all freaked out beforehand and then you come out and then you're fist pumping, like that's a, it's a pretty surreal moment. Exactly. And I think, uh, I don't know if this is a, a, I don't know if this is a statistic anymore, but um, a couple years ago, it was like public speaking was the number one fear for uh, people in the United States, I'm pretty sure, maybe even like in the world, more than even death. Yeah, and so I that was that. that was pretty interesting. Like to me. like communications <laughs> class is one of the most failed, like commonly failed oh, classes yeah, yeah, in yeah. college. Yeah, that makes common. sense. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a very uh, that's an entrepreneurial trait that one must must develop. You have order. to overcome yeah. it. You have, you have to. to, and if you can't. Um, you better find a co-founder that can do that because <laughs> exactly. uh, you're not getting out of it. That's yeah. just all there is to exactly. it. Exactly. So you're in college. Um, you're going through, you know, all of this. And then you had mentioned how this kind of sparked your entrepreneurship. Or, yeah. yeah. So you had you never wanted to be an entrepreneur before. just didn't think you were going Correct. to. And then Correct. what was that spark? Yeah. So, so honestly, uh, I didn't know what I, – I knew what entrepreneurship was. I think everybody knows the, the definition. But I don't – I didn't – I didn't know, like, I didn't feel that, right? It's like I never even thought that was an, uh, I mean, I knew nothing about it. Mm. I, I was not a business major. I knew nothing about uh, starting a company, running a company. I knew that I maybe could one day. All I knew when I ran that slate was I really, really like coming up with things that people like, and I have to really force myself to, to make sure I go and hone in on those things, make sure they really do like them, uh, get feedback, really push myself and stretch myself thin and uh, build up teams that, help us push uh, beyond our limits. I mean, those were the things that I liked out of that. And mm -hmm. uh, I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. That's what excites me. I mean, in college, I got to, when we were doing those slates, I mean, we would work so, I mean, tirelessly. We would miss our homework. We would miss our exams, but we were focused on it. And like that, uh, that adrenaline rush was like, <laughs> you know, it was infectious. When you're, when you're, when you're working 17 hours, okay, and then you can't wait to go do it again tomorrow, you're, you're doing like, what you're supposed you're to be. You're like, wait a second, yes. what is this? Yes, <laughs> you're doing what you're supposed to be. So That's I took awesome. that, and uh, my senior year, I said, I'm not going to medical school. I'm not doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. It was December, uh, my senior year. And uh, I then said, you know what? Sales is the fundamental of every company. Anything I ever want to do, it's sales it is the core of that. If you can't sell, you can't do anything. So I was like, I'm going to go and learn how to sell and really sell. Um, so I took a manufacturing job, uh, a corporate manufacturing job, and uh, we did like sales engineering, right? And so they sent me to Wisconsin for six months, and uh, it's a very intensive sales training, very, I mean, very lucrative program. Um, and I got humbled very quickly. I thought I was a good sales guy, and I wasn't. And then I learned. Um, and it was after that I went back to work for that job uh, here in Indy, and it was. It, it took me two weeks to realize I didn't want to be there. I hated it. It was awful. I was waiting until five o'clock. Hit. And I was like, I'm not living like this. And I had an idea. I was like, well, fuck it. I'll put it to paper and see what that means. And since then, here we are today. And so that's Tudor. That's Tudor. That's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. incredible. And so, okay, um, you you go to this sales training, right? Yep. And how? what was your experience in corporate America? Was that something? Oh, uh, it, it was a good one. Uh, okay. it, was, it was a good and bad one. Uh, I hated it. 
It mm -hmm. was something I never want to do it again, but I needed it. Um, I really did because I will say they they picked the best talent. Mm -hmm. um, I was with the I, you know I had a, a science background, uh, yeah, so yeah. I had enough physics in my background to, to go into the engineering program because it was a, a real engineering program with some of the top engineers. Um, yeah. And I had to go there and learn what they were learning. And I was just so far behind. Uh, but corporate America, what they do is they throw you into those pools. They are able to invest into their, uh, into their talent. Um, so corporate America has its, has its pros and cons for sure. But I hated it. Uh, <laughs> I didn't like it one bit. Uh, I didn't like the, I, what I saw is I saw my boss. Um, and I was like, you know, if it's going to take me 25 years to have that guy's job mm -hmm. um, and he's making what he's making and he's sitting in his office so much and he's not doing very many cool things, uh, I'm not doing that. Yeah. So I was like, fuck that. I'm not <laughs> doing it. And uh, I said, there's got to be a different way. Mm. Uh, and there is a different way. And Definitely. I looked at, you know, there's a, uh, this guy didn't know this, but uh, there's a guy named Patrick Sells here in the city. Um, mm -hmm. He has sales group. I'm telling you. So I actually knew that guy. We played travel soccer one year. He's a bit older than I am. But uh, he has a company here. He's doing really well. They've got a few million bucks in revenue. And uh, I saw him, and he's only 28. And I go, how's that guy doing it? And I'm still looking at my, my watch waiting for 5 o'clock. Mm. And I said, that's, that's not happening anymore. If he can do it, I can do it. Exactly. Uh, and so I did. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Good for you, man. Yeah. Um, I, I have one question, though. So you, you go three – almost four years thinking that you're going to become a doctor yeah biology major and then your first semester of senior year you're like all right screw it screw i'm gonna it. do skip i'm gonna do sales yeah so what was uh what was that decision like and what's your what were people saying what your your parents say yeah. what was kind of that yeah so it was i actually remember i vividly vividly remember the day uh, my parents are strict like they're <laughs> when i say they're strict they're not assholes right but yeah, they yeah. they uh us, like I said, they want us to take the opportunities and they want us to go make something. Uh, and, and being a physician was, was, I mean, that's the pinnacle of jobs. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember it. They, they listened, which I was surprised. I, it was actually Christmas break. Uh, it was in December of what was 2015. And I sat down with them. I said, look, I'm miserable. I don't want to do this. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to go. Uh, I'm, I'm studying for my MCAT and I hate it. Uh, I've, I've, I don't want to do this. Uh, and they said, then don't. Uh, they said, do you have a backup? And I go, I don't know. I said, I'll go into sales. I said, I think I know me, and I'm going to find a way out of it. Um, but I know if I go into this, I'm going to regret it. And yeah. I said, then don't do it. you got to trust your gut. And I, that's, they were cool with it from then, that day on. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, having parents that are that supportive, a yeah. lot of people. But they weren't yeah. They weren't about the entrepreneurship thing, though. They, <laughs> uh, it, it was a fight. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, Tudor being – I almost honestly thought maybe you had a couple of different companies that you tried to start before nope. Tudor or something, but yeah. really Tudor, that's your first uh, entrepreneurial journey. Yeah. And so when you found out, um, first of all, how'd you how'd you come up with this app? <laughs> yeah. Explain it yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll explain what Tudor is in a okay. nutshell. It's a peer to peer knowledge chain platform uh, okay. for for college students specifically. I I created this product for me uh, when I was mm. just there. So I was only six months removed from school uh, when I was there, but I realized that. Look, students are, are broke. Uh, they are putting uh, money on credit cards so they can go get hammered on the weekends, which the, they can. It, it, <laughs> yeah. It's like it's, you're supposed to go and have fun. You're yeah. supposed to go on those spring break trips, and, and you're supposed to go and, and meet the people and do the things that you're never going to get to do again. Uh, and I also realize that they struggle um, with their academics. I mean, C's get degrees is a real thing for a reason. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's a real thing, and it's – because when it's 10 o'clock at night and you're struggling on your homework or you don't know how to do what you're working on, you either, A, um, ask a friend nearby, which they don't know either, then you just wing it. Because on campus resources, they suck. Yeah, no yeah, one yeah. goes to them. They mm. just suck. Um, and tutoring sites like Chegg and, and Wyzant, they charge you 75 bucks an hour, mm. which is just, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, and you're going to get a FaceTime call with an old dude. <laughs> <coughs> so, sorry. Oh, you're good. <coughs> so I basically just said, look, the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, technology industry, it, it works, especially for this age group. Um, hold on, do you guys have any water? Yeah. Connor, could you hook him up <coughs> with some water, please? Appreciate it. Um, Thanks, bro. No, but like peer-to-peer uh, -peer technologies, they, they work for 18 to 23-year-olds. Um, so we capitalized on that. We brought it to this system, and uh, we basically said, look, let's connect struggling students with students that want to make a little extra money. Mm. You know what? No one knows homework best than the people that have already w went through it and done well on it. So yeah. we connect two college students together that want to make a little extra money and uh, who need some help. 
Okay, and so you had this idea, and then, <coughs> then what? I mean, were you just like, uh, how do I, how do I build this? Sure, thing? sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was actually a. Uh, the idea was. <coughs> Uh, much more primitive than what I just said, right? I didn't know yeah. what it meant. Uh, <laughs> I, I had had the, the name in my head, uh, and I put that to paper, and then, uh, sorry, I don't know why it's going on in my throat here. No, but, you're uh, good. He's getting some water <coughs> for you. No, so uh, I had the name in my head, and I had the idea, like, Uber for tutoring. Um, okay. And then it, it kind of morphed from there. But from the very first day, I remember it vividly. I was driving down the road, and uh, I just I put it to paper. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, so I had the idea. And I put it to paper, and I called my brother, my oldest brother. He's an aerospace engineer. I oh, mean, this, this, okay. dude's a, this dude's a smart motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, he's just so smart. And he's so, he's, uh, so we have the same personality, right? But he's not nearly, he's a nerd. Like he's, and that's okay, I tell him that right now. Um, he's just a big old nerd. And he had two newborns. Uh, he had a new wife and a, and a, a new home. And um, I called him one night, and I said, Joe, like, this, is, this is good. I think this is cool. And he goes, Fuck, this is cool. <laughs> uh, and he goes, well, let me just think about it, because he's a developer, okay? So we, uh, we both slept on it. And I, I woke up that first night. I woke up thinking about it again, and I mm -hmm. went right back to my paper. Um, and I knew right then and there this was something I should look at. Uh, but, I, again, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what yeah. I was doing. I didn't know what entrepreneurship was. I didn't know anything. I'm working at sales job. Uh, but I called Joe again that night, and he had already started thinking about it a bit more. And we started working on the product that night. We started, mm -hmm. uh, so Joe had some software, so we were actually like doing some user experience. And, and I will never forget those, the next four to five months after that. I mean, the most intense, the most creative, the most uh, just awesome, awesome times. I, I talked with my brother for uh, every single night. We were on the phone for multiple hours mm -hmm. uh, doing FaceTime calls. We were building out our product, throwing out new ideas, researching other companies, and, and figuring out what this means. Um, I mean, Joe, I mean, I was doing this. So I had to build the product at night, mm -hmm. and then of a morning, I had to figure out what this entrepreneurship thing was. Yeah. I, I still didn't know. So, uh, I mean, working a uh, 9 to 5, I basically got up at uh, 5.30 or 6 about every morning and did about an hour and a half of, of learning. I would watch YouTube on my TV, and yeah. I would just look up as many videos as I can, right? Uh, anything about uh, venture capital or how to market or, or really how to build technologies. I had, I just was consumed. I, I mean, I have notepads and notepads of just notes. And I did that every morning for months. And I'd go to work and then I'd come home and then we'd work on our product again until we fell asleep. And then we did it over again and mm -hmm. over and over and over and over and over again. And then I started trying to raise money and I was terrible. <laughs> how long ago was it when you had this idea? Um, Right at two years ago, actually. Uh, okay. To now, it's probably dead set two years. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. And then so uh, you <coughs> go that four or five months, and then you start, you're in the phase of funding then. Yeah, uh, then, kind of, yes. I thought I was. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was. Little I was, learning curves. Yes, big learning <laughs> curves. I, uh, so we ended up. We had a, a, you know, we live in, I mean, Indianapolis is not the, uh, the capital to go and raise money in, by yeah, any yeah. means, especially <laughs> not when you're a first-time founder, uh, when one of your co-founders is in Texas, and neither of you have never done this before. Uh, it's not uh, something that people want to invest in, especially mm. not a company that is an educational company at that. Yeah. Uh, and venture capital, ed tech, isn't awesome. Uh, it, it typically fails. Because um, it's not sexy, but this is. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> No, so we, we tried to start raising money, and it just wasn't working. But what I did is I took as many meetings as I could. I knew sales. I was a hustler. So mm -hmm. I took every meeting I could. I didn't care who it was. I didn't care if it was my age, someone else's age, random Facebook message, LinkedIn, phone calls, uh, cold calls, anything I could, any conversation, I took it. And I remember there was a couple uh, firms, angel firms here in the city. One of them was, was somebody that let me pitch, and it was an awful pitch, but... When I was talking, he spent about 45 minutes with me afterwards critiquing the hell out of it. And I, mm -hmm. after every call, I'd say, where did you stop listening? What did I do wrong? What was awful? Tell me where I could fix it and what I should do next time, every single time. That's awesome. And then I build on it, and I build on it, and build on it. And it's, it took so long. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, and I knew that I, I had to be okay with that. Yeah. Um, it was, I mean, it's humiliating sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, it is... Not easy um, to sit there and just get humiliated like that and <laughs> kicked in the nuts, but uh, you do it. And because when you're passionate about something, you have to take those off the chin. Um, we actually pulled in our own money. So Joe had thrown in about 45K. Uh, I had thrown in some of my savings as well, all of my savings. 
Uh, my parents were pissed at me at this yeah, point. So you uh, go all in with it. Yes. I like um, it. My parents were not happy. Uh, my dad and I are really close. Um, so my mom and I, too. But uh, my dad and I didn't talk for a while because uh, he, <laughs> I was wanting to leave a job that I had just gotten. And he was like, what the hell are you doing? This is a phenomenal job. Um, and I said, you got to you gotta trust me. This is what mm. I want to do. And he said, you don't even know anyone that's an entrepreneur. You don't know anyone that owns a tech company. You don't know anyone that has ever done this. Why do you think you can do it? And, he, and he's, he's probably... He knows my potential better than anybody, yeah. but he was scared. He was definitely yeah. scared because uh, this is a tough, a tough job. It's a tough gig. It's something that, I mean, 99% of startups fail. Mm-hmm. Um, what, so what was your answer to that question? What makes you think you can do it? Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I can do it. I, I believe I can. Mm. Uh, I don't know anything. I like um, that. Good answer. I know that I can't wait to do it again tomorrow morning. And I knew I don't fucking care about a good salary at yeah. this point. I, I saw what a good salary was going to be. And that was uh, looking at my watch and waiting until 5 o'clock. Mm. And I knew I don't care if I can't make any more money then. Uh, it's not fucking worth it. <laughs> uh, I, I don't care. And this is awesome. This is what I'm learning. This is something that I get sweaty thinking about. And yeah, uh, yeah. I said, Dad, you got you to gotta just trust me. And I said, and if you're not okay with that, then we're probably not going to be talking for a while because this is going to be something I'm doing. And he said, well, I guess we're not. Oh, wow. um, and we didn't. <laughs> and then I got my first investment check, and then he apologized. Really? Um, yeah, it's and how much? Did. How if you don't mind me asking, oh, how no, much was that for? So we ended up getting. So Joe and I put in ours, and then we actually did a failed Kickstarter campaign. No one, no one raised, no one put anything into it. it oh, it was. I was so. I'm still, How'd you market that? Just we did very shittily. I mean, <laughs> like we just Facebook, right? We thought okay. it was gonna go uh, locally viral. It didn't. We were so <laughs> stupid. Uh, but somebody did. Uh, there was actually one of our other co-founders named Sasha. Um, That's she's, my sister's name. Really? Yeah, yeah Sasha well. Caesar. Uh, she was from NYU. She's an MBA from NYU. Okay. She's always wanted to work on an ed, ed tech startup and uh, tutoring in particular. And she actually threw oh, in 30, wow. 30K. Uh, there you go. Yes, yeah, she did. Uh, <laughs> out of nowhere. I mean, we needed it. We were scratching pennies at that point, uh, building the product. But um, we ended up getting our first investment this year, it was this year. Um, I think it was back in April, um, maybe even May. So I earned the respect of uh, a local uh, guy here that, that is in the, the VC realm, and I let him champion me through uh, some of these obstacles because I knew I had to have credibility. Yep. I didn't. Ha- so our product is is not just a I can't go sell a a, a a tangible product and say hey I sold a thousand look at what we've done now give us money and we'll scale that you can't do that with a peer to peer company. Our product is not a mobile app. Our product is our is our user base. Our product is being able to supply both have that both supply and the demand on both sides. Um, and you can't do that without money. You can't do that without a good facilitation, which mm-hmm. is the app. Um, and today, no one gives a shit about your feelings. No one gives a shit that you're a startup. Okay, mm-hmm. users today, especially 18 to 22, they care about what they're looking at, and they're used to Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, Google, uh, and every other multi-billion-dollar company that has a lot of money and really clean apps. Yeah. So if we were just to throw out an app and try to say, "Oh, we got 100 users," it's not going to work <laughs> like that. You can't. It doesn't work. So I was really. I mean, I we were forced to find other ways. And that's actually like my life mantra is find a way. Yeah. Uh, there's a way around everything. And there was, um, we actually launched a beta and to, to my alma mater ball state. And we got about 300 students to just really give us good feedback. And they nice. did some assessments on, on what our user experience was and our value propositions, business models, et cetera. And I took that, um, and to the, to back to the investors, they wanted data. Um, I wasn't going to throw the app out there when it wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's going to give us a big old red X on our heads. Uh, so I went and got them the data they needed, uh, and I did a marketing. I made sure my branding was as clean as they were going to get. The pitch was flawless to the very word. I knew that if I couldn't give them the data they wanted, I had to give them everything else and more. Mm. And that's what we spent our time on, our branding, our marketing, our messaging, our pitch. Uh, I mean, literally anything we could do, we did it. Uh, mm. to the, I mean, to the fucking donuts sitting out there. <laughs> I mean, anything I could do, I did it. Uh, and that's what got us our very first fifteen thousand dollar check, and then nice. our next fifteen thousand, and then our next fifteen thousand, and then our next seventy five thousand, and then uh, now we're uh, roughly a little over two hundred k, plus our hundred k that we'd already put in. So three hundred k for a group of people that don't know what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. That's impressive. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah, I appreciate um, it. 
And dude, it, it sounds like you've been this entrepreneur your whole entire life. <laughs> um, the the way you speak and your mindset, I can kind of just get the vibe from you that um, you're a very professional individual and uh, sure. you're you're very naturally business minded, even though like you didn't realize it growing up, maybe. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you're actually ex- exactly right. Uh, we actually, my mom and I were talking the other day and I was thinking back on uh, just a few things that I believe kind of helped get me here. Because, you know, it's, this is, I mean, it's crazy to me, too. I don't, I wake up some days and I even get like a tear in my eye thinking about like mm. how uh, far we've come and how far I've come personally. I mean, and, and it's, and it's crazy. But I thought.